Good afternoon and good, good evening to the audience around the world. We just had a live performance by Evala, the first round of the session here in this venue, and we are airing this talk event from the same venue today. So the Japan Media Arts Festival takes part in the Arts Electronic Linz Austria through online joint program Garden Tokyo. The theme of this year is the power of the unseen, time, sound, resonance, ecosystems, social bodies, bonds and life. So this the online talk is titled Memories of Journey, the Future of Spatial Acoustics See by Your Ears. And the, we are streaming from Rito Vase, the venue, and Evala gave a live performance. And the, the Rito Vase is a special venue that enables the acoustic and audio, the technologies. So I'm Tomura, the director of Garden Tokyo. I also serve as a moderator for this talk session. And I work for Sony Group Corporation for content development and R&D related to sustainability and these practices. Let me introduce an Evala san So Evala san is a musician and a sound artist. And he founded See by Your Ears, a project that explores dormant possibilities of hearing and has been creating edgy works of electronic music with spatial composition and exploring auditory experience with 3D sound systems in the 2020. And he received the excellent award at the 24th Japan Media Arts Festival for his invisible cinema, CC she to you who is yet to come and this year he received the Prince Al's electronic honorary mention for his the Chosho Hake in Rita with HPL version. It may not be correct to categorize Evala as a sound artist. He runs See by Your Ears project. He is exploring and the act of listening to awake deeply underlining perceptions as a pioneer while utilizing state-of-the-art technologies. He's an artist and a craftsman pursuing his work to the perfection without excusing the crudeness due to imperfect technologies. So by developing the state of the art, the audio technologies and the processes, and he's uh, leading the development of uh, the audio and the sound technologies. Thank you for joining. May I have a comment, Evala san? Not really. I'm Evala. I'm uh, happy to join you today. Thank you, Ebala san. So, we are also joined by the, the Kubo Jiro, the sound engineer of award winning Chosho Hake in Rito Base HPL version. And the Kubo san that founded Acoustic Field Inc. in 2007. And his work includes the development of sound systems and consulting on spatial audio. And based on his rich experience, he provides technical support for sound artists' music production and installations using spatial audio. In 2014, he released the high quality binaural processing technology HPL, and he's a technical director of See by Your Ears. So I'm Kumbo from Acoustic Field. So let's move into the talk. 
So first of all, I'd like to talk about Chosho Hake. You just performed here, and you released uh, this work in 2019 in Nakazu Bansho in Garden in the, the Kagawa Prefecture, the Japanese traditional garden the, that dates back to over 300 years. It was where this work was first performed. Then at Ars Electronica, there's the music and the sound at the division, and the, you won the honorary mention for this work. So the, uh, this year, the Ars Electronica received the largest number of the applications for this division, 1,150 artists. So that uh, this. This is a great achievement that you won the award out of such many applicants. And you are a contemporary sound artist. And using a fundamental power that stimulates and auditory sense to generate acoustic experience. And in your work, and natural soundscape and acoustic soundscape were combined to generate the visual, the landscape you never experienced in your life. And some artists focuses on concept out of other criteria, but the Ebala sons the work is known to be a very high level of quality, embodying both beauty and violence, so that uh, we look forward to the seeing more of his future work. So this is a comment from the jury of Aus Electronica. Now I'd like to ask you about your works. And so I'd like to know how you developed and the concept for the Chosho Hake and what you wanted to express in this work. It takes about one hour to walk around in this huge Japanese garden. So this work is sound installation. So this is a very huge installation, and you walk around for one hour to see around. And the sound artist, Suzuki Akio, and one of the, his masterpieces is called Otodate. And Otodate is named after Chadate, tea making. So the concept of his work is listen the carefully, listen meticulously, and he the used uh, this very concept into his artwork. And in the huge Japanese garden that you need to spend one hour to look around, in some points and locations, and the otodate were placed, then also mounted the microphone. In Otodate, to capture the sound ecosystem in the garden and also sampled the natural sound and the collected all of the sound into a small tea ceremony room and recreated fantasy the inside the tea ceremony room. So this is one of the masterpieces piece of the Chosho Hake. So the tea ceremony, the house is called the 
The oldest on the tea ceremony house, Kanchoro, was a place and we the created the reflection and re the recreation. So thank you very much, Ibarra san. And it's really a crystallization of technology within this art piece. So, Mr. Kubo, would you like to mention about the technical part? Yes, it is about the technological issue for the Cho Show Hake, please. Yes, I would like to know about what you have done at the garden. And if there is any comparison with other art pieces, please. As Mr. Ibarra mentioned, the garden is very huge in scope. And the point of the otodate, where we have the microphone sit, there's three points. So there's three points of otodate, and we play some microphone. And we had 200 meter each cables, which led to the tea room. So as you have seen as today's performance live, we used eight speakers. And Evara-san's Cho Sho Hake was on live for the performance. And for myself, if it was the room in there, I would like to, so I was always thinking about how Ibarra-san's art piece is going to be miss, uh, giving out the messages. And then we have the configuration of the microphone and uh, the award was about the origin of the sound. And Ebara-san has remixed the sound for his sound source. And so people listening, they don't have speakers and systems such as this one. So utilizing the technology called binaural as explained, I have been designing the HPL. This is the binaural technology, which is standing for Headphone Listening, HPL, utilizing two speakers to make a three-dimensional sound environment to create the ambience. Thank you very much on that. Regarding Choshu Hakke, I've been looking at the photograph, and uh, I think Ibarra-san was taking a photo with Suzuki Akio. So, who is Suzuki Akio to you, Ibarra-san? It's a very long story. I hear that Suzuki-san has been very impactful on you. So, I would like you to explain about your relationship with Suzuki-san and how it has come to connection with the Chosho Hake. So, when I start talking for Suzuki-san, it's going to be very, very long story. Oh, please keep it in two minutes. So when I was in elementary school, second years, when, uh, so he came and visited my city where I had been born and growing. And he was digging a hole within the mountain, and I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was creating a space to listen to sound, and he was like an uncle to us. So that was Suzuki Akio, and what he was creating there is going to be the Hinata Boko no Kukan, is it a, literally a space for having some enjoying sunlight, and that became his representative uh, piece. And uh, that was regarding uh, the sound of the wind, the sound of the ocean waves, and it was a very queer sound with the modulation. And I was learning piano at that time as a child, and I've been doing some musical activity. And at one point, when I started creating a sound by computer, I was now inquired by my fans, do you know Suzuki Akio? And I really 
said, oh, yes, he's very famous in Europe because I didn't want to go into details with the story, but then, in effect, it struck me because he was the man that I had been synchronizing and meeting when I was small. And so Suzuki Akio is my starting point. And the sound, when we call a sound a sound, usually, people are thinking about the source of the sound. But there's sound source, and then sound source should have a space in order to make a so sound. Therefore, we have to have two factors for making a sound. And Suzuki-san was thinking about the space already. So he was focusing on the space spatial part of the sound and try to focus on the activity of listening to make it into an art light, art piece. And that was what he was doing within the world of the art, and I was very much impacted. Thank you very much. So if you go on, I think you can go on ever discussing about Suzuki Akio. So I would like to ask you of him in another occasion. So this is a great opportunity for me to ask you more. And this time you're creating the version to distribute and utilizing light and sound. You have been creating the tea room, a Japanese tea room. So if there should be anybody looking at the distribution, uh, the aired live, I think people will enjoy it and they still have repercussion about his lives. And you were creating ultra reality within the space. And maybe that could invoke people's emotion, memories too. And I too feel a strange sensation in me. So a tea room is the Japanese type, type tea room and there's the art of tea in Japan. And from conceptual tea room, you have been delivering message. So how did you or come to think of preparing such space? So if you have anything special about this format, the scenery background, please tell us. So as Mr. Kubo mentioned, ours has been asking me to package the exhibition itself. And the exhibition, the Kanchoro masterpiece, when we go to that place, there's a wide space, a wide garden, and this Kanchoro is the best tower within the garden, and that's a space where you can gather all the sound within the garden. Kanchoro, it's in Chinese uh, character, it is a place, a tower to view uh, the ocean tide. So it coincidentally was uh, the oldest tea room in Japan, and that was a tower that collects every sound within the garden. And Annex Cook's Fair, uh, that was a fair related to a wide space, and it's a pitch dark place, and there's small boxes. And when you go into that area, every one person will be able to experience a art piece for 10 minutes. And that is uh, the most representative uh, masterpiece, and it really related to me. So I thought my art piece was all connected to the tea room. That was the impression when I got when I got to this kanchoro. So you go walking to the tea room, and anything that you have experienced while on the way throughout the garden, everything comes back to you like an experience from space. And it just fell into my heart that tea room was such. So Anna Cook's fair uh, probably was linked with tea room, and that struck me. Annie Cook's fair, uh, the size of the room is just like a tea room, too. So it is a space that you can just uh, 
think about yourself. And that was the first time I noticed after hearing you. So that place is an anechoic place where it is a movable room. And it's just the room, um, the space, like three times three meters. So Japanese tea garden, a tea house, is a place and you look into yourself. So this is a nature of the space. So that I think that uh, this uh, influenced the you to decide the size of the anechoic chamber, the similar to tea room. Then I uh, move on to the next work and invisible cinema, C, C, C. Now to you, the who is yet to come. This work won the Excellence Award the, at the 24th Japan Media Arts Festival at Division this year. So this is an invisible cinema and without any visual image but sound for 70 minutes. I enjoyed this and it was an extraordinary experience. And it, the audience of this work uh, on say it was a very shocking and extraordinary experience so that that this work has become quite controversial and the, what is difficult about your work and the pieces is that you cannot verbally express it so that uh, to know your work and you need to experience hands-on but uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to talk about your pieces. And I had, I experienced and your work twice in the past. And I remembered I was a living thing, just like I was a little baby. Although I'm grown up as an adult now, but I had the weird feeling that I was re-experiencing my entire life history. And even I don't see anything, I close my eyes, but I experienced the various visual images and came up in my brain. And as this work and the one hour and then the screen again and with enhanced technologies after winning the Excellence Award at the Japan Media Festival so that I think that more and more people are experiencing this work and receiving very special the feelings, so that I'd like to hear more about this title. An echoic, an echoic sphere, this is a movable an echoic chamber, so that the one person could experience at the same time, so that you have to go into the chamber one by one, but in I after this work, and I wanted to create a piece that the many people can experience together at the cinema. So I thought that I could do something like live performance. But I realized and I could make an invisible cinema. And what is very interesting is that audience has totally different the feelings the from the same piece. So that so this is an this is something that we you receive from uh, ex externally but in invisible cinema that you are exposed to sound only for 70 minutes and that evokes the fantastic compositions that you experienced or you never experienced in the past in your life so that this the composition that evokes something deep inside 
yourself so that I don't have a concrete the concept that I'd like to tell to the audience that because and this is not possible with the audio, the art. So as this is a sound work and it cannot be the documented or the, the captured as a record, but so that I, I'd like to ask and Kubo-san how you enabled that work technically. It is not easy to explain everything, but just like live performance today and the tea room in Bansho and Garden and the, the people will listen to the sound to headphones with binaural technology and so they can experience the same performance of the work that won the award. This is a totally same title, Joshua Hake, but environment, the sounds are generated are different, but the we receive the same the comments from the audience, but the CCC was screened at Spiral Hall Cinema, that is much larger space than here, with a capacity of 200 people, and using the larger scale speaker systems, and they usually used for a music concert to reproduce the sound. But the Ebola's work and give the same the impression whenever it is the performed, wherever it is performed, so that I have to the reproduce and his sounds always in the same way. And but the, his work is not intended to create the weird feelings among audience. But for the, the headphones and also speaker sounds in the large venue, and we create sounds in a very detailed manner. So I may not sound as an engineering, but I usually replay the sound the, from the beginning, and I think that it is a good the surround sound. But the surround sound that audience can enjoy and feel good, then I start to step up and one step and the another step and making adjustment little by little but if I when I hit a certain point it start it starts to change so that I usually the agree with him that uh, this is a sound that we have to make for this work a spatial sound like invisible cinema, so you create a sound in space, so that venue or space itself becomes a part of sound creation. <laughs> so that after the film ends and everyone goes to Kubo-san asking the how many channels did you use? Yes, and this is what everyone surprises when they hear that, and especially that all their engineers and who learned how to create sounds for films. And so that they usually say that they try not to count the number of speakers before the experiencing the film. But after seeing it, and they will the surprise that the we used a fewer number of speakers than they expected. But I don't think that is too few because and 
I think that there's a right number of speakers, the right positions of speakers for the piece of work. So this is what I always discuss with Ebala when creating sound for his work. Thank you. So, so just like Joshua Hake, acoustic sound, a special sound can tell the image of the world and also that you can distribute sound to express your artistic world. And also awake to awake the audience, the sense of sound. So it's like a magician. And on, in my work, I deal with both and visual and the audio aspects. And so there are a lot of visual information. Sometimes they are fake and they are too much. And uh, there's an excessive amount of visual information. There's no room for imagination. So audio has a big potential. And the hearing capability is different from uh, the visual. Uh, there's one aspect that you cannot fake and another aspect that you can fake. And Ebarasan knows about the balance of fake and non-fake, non-fake and fake. And so you're making reality more come to the reality. Maybe you're overcoming the reality, making you are beyond reality. And so the level of perfection, the behavior, the attitude that you are pursuing, the level of per Perfection is so great. I am impressed. And we already have some several questions from the audiences. And already there was a question, how can we pursue the level of perfection like you? That was a question from a German people. So when you are composing music, you are creating a world view which is very imaginary. So do you start from images first, or do you start from melody or the source of sound? So where do you get your idea was the question. So it's not totally that I start from imagination. I don't have any imagination. And therefore, all I can do is to create my world view from sound. Therefore, I very much concentrate in the sound. Marisha Fati, who has been deceased, and he has been created and talking about the first question about the sound. And the first sentence that he wrote was, what is your first sound that you are listening right now? And when you are writing that down, this is the Malaysian artist. And then when I write, oh, this is the air conditioner's sound, and then when I am or somebody who is riding a train and who writes down, I hear a train sound. Oh, if you write down and jot down such wording, you'll probably not become an art sound uh, creator. So you have to be conscious about uh, the movement of the clothing or maybe the silks, and that makes me is so interested. So I am focusing on such area. So it's very interesting. So when you are writing down what are you are feeling or so, uh, hearing, you can just write down anything, and the list goes down the road. And when you start writing that, I hear somebody walking, and then you can just go down on the list to the level of, oh, this is the footstep of a salary worker. Or when you are jotting down that, you hear the sound of a car tire, then then you can just write down this sound is coming from a taxi. And then when you fill the whole note, then it comes into ideation. That's very interesting. Another question from another German people. So what is your source of inspiration? That's a very straight question. Oh, for me, it's just sound. So 
let us say if there should be a blueprint and within a blue picture if there's a composition and you like a certain sound then i just throw it into my computer and then within like a pebble just moving on with the surface ripple of the waters the it's not going to be a composition that goes back and fro but the pebble is going to be hopping onto the water surfaces like a ripple and then it keeps on going which creates a composition for me so it's just like sculpture when you start out and throw the pebble it creates some format it's very interesting so when the pebble is thrown within the water, then you have some wave and then another pebble thrown, you are looking at another tide occurring. And that's very interesting. So if you're looking at the uh, surfaces, then it is about the surfaces, the area. So my way is called sculpturing the space, not time-based. And if we're just looking at time base, it's just about the cassette tape A side, B side, and it's not so in my case. With Ebarason, I have been creating an acoustic pair a, a piece as well, together too. So the moisture and the uh, space size and all the uh, functions that you have, you're creating the best sculpture of sound that you can create, and you're a master on that. Another question from UK, a musician, probably. So the question goes, your sound, Ebara-san, is very unique and it says very clean. And the question goes on, how do you create the sound by utilizing which technology? So maybe that could be a very general question to you, but if you can answer on that to a musician, please. So I'm not utilizing something very special, but I have a microphone and take that sound through that microphone and then throw that sound into the PC to make the composition. But what to note for, for instance, Choshio Hake, so it is an installation piece. And uh, this is the album piece, which is installation, which is including sound and space, which is very important. Uh, let us say 10 years ago, uh, there was a lot of digital music, but then currently there is a lot of installation. And within the installation pieces, the significance of having the package being awarded is significant. So uh, the recording technology means a lot. And this is binaural technology, which is run by Kubo-san. And binaural technology has been there for several decades. Uh, but then I think HPL means a lot. Oh, regarding HPL, Kubo-san, can you just uh, elaborate on this? Yes, I'll be very short on this. As Ebara-san mentioned, HPL is a binaural technology base. And it's not something so edgy, but it's just like how uh, the acoustic space sound like Ibarra-san is doing. I don't do anything excessive. And so to start off, when people are utilizing or listening to music and utilizing headphones, and usually at the recording studio, there's two speakers. Uh, there's a speaker just in right in front of you, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, and make a mix to create a sound. And then we try to make the mixing the uh, optimal so that people listening will be enjoying the sound the most. Uh, but the headphone does not really reproduce that satisfying sound. And when you are listening to a headphone at home, 
you will not place it on a bed. And if you don't utilize the headphone well, uh, the reproduction of the sound will not come appropriate. So that sort of idea has been existing from the past, uh, the binaural technology. But then it was usually used, utilized for cinemas and it was not specialized for music. The reason why not specialty for music was that because the sound uh, became a little bit degraded because it was focused much more on the effect itself, therefore compromising the sound quality, but to have better effect, like surrounding effective sound, like uh, going through the cinema. And cinema theaters are uh, dramatic. The engineer creating music was not like that, that they were very much uh, obsessed and having something particular about the sound quality. And so the binaural, I just wanted to have a binaural that could be helping out the music and having better effect on the music itself. And in the NHK uh, second channel, uh, there's 22 point one channel and they're uh, focusing on being utilizing various channel and ambisonic ambisonics are something that I can also cater to. So freely and casually we would like to create a headphone and the listener side don't have to be preparing anything special and just straight uh, go straight into the Chosho Hake to enjoy and just by usual headphones and that was a technology. Thank you. The established format for existing media usually lacks ability to evolve. So Eva-san and Kuba-san, I think that you are challenging the existing format. So in many countries, and we are still suffering COVID pandemic, in the COVID situation, and we are not able to travel overseas, and you, we need to stay at home. And now people's behavior is changing. But I remember that Eva Lassan said that the only the authentic things can survive in this situation. I think it's very true. And of course, and we hope the pandemic will be over soon. But in the current situation, and everyone is required to transform themselves. So, post-pandemic expressions and how it's going to be. I'd like to hear a comment from you about post-COVID COVID artistic the expressions and talking about the pandemic and it, what is significant about this event is it is it has been occurring simultaneously across the world because and in the past and disasters or the terrorist attacks and took place only in one area in the world, but we are suffering the same pandemic everywhere in the world. So that is causing the changes in our uh, senses of value. So rather than giving an objective impact now, and we are required to uh, create something inside from ourselves. So what is interesting is that the invisible cinema title, CCG, to you when, uh, who is yet to come. So it was at the end of January 2020 when no one was wearing a face mask and we had the full of people in the cinema, but just after a couple of weeks and we had to start wearing 
masks. Uh, so that it was a very end of the era before the COVID. So I found it is interesting that the people's the comments started to be different once the pandemic started, even we didn't change anything special, but we started to hear something different from the audience of the film. So it is because and what's inside the audience had changed. It is not simply because of the sound, so that the audience are influenced by something, not the sound. So that's timeless artwork can be a mirror reflecting the audience and yourself, the watching or experiencing the piece of work. And this is what happened though, with CCC, Invisible Cinema. Even I experienced the, your work and twice in the past, but I received a different expression both time. And after the COVID, uh, the, we really want to show your work overseas in Europe, the US, and China, and Indonesia. Mm. So there could be a lot of places and we can demonstrate the your work and where people may react the differently. So we started talking about your recent works, but the back to the, your genesis. And you mentioned that sound diary earlier. In 2007, you started hacking tone. And I also listened to that, like sound of snoring and the sound of the, the raining or the, the crowd in the Paris. And you have been making the, this work for 15 years or so. So this is a very genesis of your the recent works such as Joshua Hake and the Invisible Cinema. I like field recording, although I didn't directly link it to my sound creations. What was the shocking to me? But that the after recording a sound with a microphone, and if you wear headphones and listen to it, and you hear a totally different sound, so that what you hear with your ears and what you hear two headphones are different, so it becomes another reality. So that may link to HPL <laughs> technology. <laughs> so the sound that you listen with your the natural ears and are different from what you hear from the headphones because and in the crowd if you are called out your name and you immediately realize that. So that I realize that and what I can hear from the headphones are different from what I hear in the reality. So that's why I keep making this work and I take a microphone to the record sound. So, so sometimes I realize that there's a very, very low sound included in what I recorded. So it removes a limits in my perception. That's why I started hacking tone. 
So that with the basic wall, they take a piece of photo of the subject, and also the combined with a sound I recorded. So I just kept uploading it as a diary. And I started to expand this work into an installation and a different type of pieces. But of course, and when I started, I had no idea how it could develop. So hacking tone may, made me realize that I keep receiving sound without noticing un anything unconsciously. And when I, you see something and you just uh, remember it visually, but the sound, it that comes deep into your body, and you can close the, your eyes and to shut visual information, but you cannot close your ears not to listen to anything. This is what the ebala san said before. So which means and with the ears and human beings keep receiving sound information till the end of life. So that the ears and the nose, the such senses and cannot be refused. And when you feel something nostalgic, and that kind of sense is invisible. So I think in these days and creating feelings like that could be uh, more and more important, much more important than before. Thank you. So let me touch upon other pieces too. As mentioned, the Anechoic Sphere series. In 2013, NTT ICC, it was shared. It was uh, the Octosion Metagolos and Hearing Things Metronome. It was 2016 piece. And ha starting from hacking tone and anechoic sphere, you have been moving on. And what was the message that you would you wanted to uh, deliver? Because there seemed to be some changes. So, in a general way of saying hacking tone, next came utilizing the hacking tone items and to create acoustic bend. So this is the on CD media. It was a CD album. It's already in old media, so as to say. And I think that was in 2010. And at that time, I it's not that I have done everything I wanted to do, but then within this media, everything that I wanted to express was already done. So I create sound through computers, and computer is very good at having three-dimensional texture, like rough or slippery or glossy. But then within the computer, you cannot create the spatial area when there's a space, a very large one or a small one. And when you try to capture sound by a microphone, uh, you cannot have uh, that space a uh, factor. And after the acoustic bend, I had been churning myself to creating a piece utilizing much more number of uh, microphones. So a CD and stereo-based creation, I lost interest totally on that media. And so therefore, uh, for it's been a decade that I have not been launching any CD uh, art pieces, and then coming back to Chosho Hake, and then via this Chosho Hake, I think this is a very first time for several years, but I created an album. Well, I didn't want to release such album. Actually, when we're talking about uh, the stereophonic sound, we've been creating a very much stereophonic sound together. <laughs> but then he has not been creating binaural piece for a very long time. No, because I like uh, creating an art piece based on space, says Ibarasan. And 
utilizing the HBL uh, Hibara sound has been creating the uh, binaural sound. Yes, so there's no other albums based on uh, the spatial sound. Yes, that's right. Let us go to our next topic. Hibara san as your art piece. Oh, um, you have been working on a lot of collaboration and going through your collaboration art piece. We, you have been delivering a lot of shock to a lot of people. And so Acoustic Vessel Odyssey, it has been launched in 2018 and we have worked together on that. It's a special sound, acoustic sound, and we wanted to create an acoustic vessel and utilizing the uh, sonic VR uh, technology, utilizing sonic serve VR technology, and we created a vessel. In this case, uh, be able to entertain a number of people, not just like uh, several people like enjoying in the tea room. So we wanted to create a corridor, or in this case, we call this a vessel. And utilizing this Sony sound field synthetic technology, you have been leveraging other technology and along with Ebara-san and Kim -san, Kimchi and Chips, and Sony's R&D team has been working together. And at that point, I was surprised that Ebara-san's vision is leading the way for the Sony R&D engineers in a strict way. And so the technology itself was polished and horned so much, thanks to Ebara-san. And there was another piece done in America, and it was recommended as the uh, agency and culture of Japan, too. And at Rito Base, Touch That Sound exhibition was held, too, in a similar way. That was in 2019. And the Invisible Cinema, the CCC, was the topic or the motif. So we have been making a creation version of the acoustic sound. And when you have a very abundant, rich worldview, then you are able to utilize the technology. And the Tatsa Sound exhibition was so liked by people. All the seats were reserved. And after that, the Kobe Cinema has been offering you to go on with the concept of listening enjoying the cinema. And so that was a very new way to enjoy cinema. And our last piece that I would like to introduce is Synesthesia X1 2.44. This too was a shock to us. So it's difficult to place anything in words and uh, the visual comes in a very striking way. And you have to be as uh, feeling that sense by the whole body. And one, 2.44, what was that? And so it's about vibration. So we use two speaker and 44 uh, vibra vibration or vibrator. And so it's the audio spec. And so the body is going to be the medium or media to listen to the music. And so musical experience goes through your body. And I think we can call it an update of sound. Or it is also uh, the sensation of a synesthesia, too. So, you are utilizing new technology and you're putting it into experiences for uh, the general public and I expect highly from you. And so lastly, I would like to have your last comment from you, both of you. So starting with Kubo-san, please. I'm an engineer and I love Evara-san's art piece. And well, it's not about hobby of the uh, music, but it's about we have it's share we share the same likely likeness of the sound. 
So, I am always thinking about、uh, whether it's going to be binaural or how much channel we need to be to reproduce Ebara-san's sound, and I would like to work on that too going forward. Ebara-san? Oh, I have, a I have a say. So, I have to say that with Kubo-san, I think I feel a lot of affinity. So, we communicate without utilizing language. So, just looking at his expression, then you understand yourselves. So, usually we understand mutually. So, it's no longer anything beyond languages or beyond numbers. And then anything that is dropped off from the usual communication is readable with me and Kubo san. So when we have music, and there's a ghost around the music, that is something that you can only hear and see by your audio senses. And that is、uh, realized in CNC too. So when you are hearkening to the audio, there is a story or an image that you can capture, and that should be drawn out into a creation, which some, is something that I love. So that is the way that I would like to work on from here on. Thank you very much, and I would like to listen to you so far and so more. But now it is time, therefore, therefore it is time to say thank you very much to the two people. And Ibarra san's live performance, we're going to have another one tomorrow, too. And the ours is going to be the last day tomorrow,、uh, September 12, Austrian time, 5 p.m. in Japan time, is going to be a 24 hours in mid. Day, and that's going to be the last performance. Or you can watch everything. And also, I love Tony Gucci. You may be able to experience totally different things. And you can enjoy his performance. And the Joshua. And the music pieces. Apple Play, and so that you, the, you can also download on his piece of work. Actonica Garden Tokyo is、uh, providing a variety of programs and live performance and the talks and some are archived. So that I the hope that、uh, you will see and other programs and please check the, our website for more details. Again, thank you very much for joining us.